What's going on everyone? Welcome to my channel. I am here with Jose behind the camera. What's up guys? We are going to do another cooking show or video, whatever you want to call it. But today we have something special for you guys. We are doing dinner and dessert. Get right into this video and let's get cooking. All right guys, so the first thing we're going to make is flan. Now I have never made flan, but Jose is amazing at it. So we're gonna let him take over this one. I'm gonna help out here and there, but he's gonna show you guys how to make flan. You ready? All right guys, so tonight we're making flan, Puerto Rican flan, not, you know, other country flans because they don't taste the same. They make it different ways. So to start off, we're gonna take two eggs. We're using two eggs. See what happens when you go to the gym? You're on that pre-workout. Almost completely crushed the egg. No shells in there though. Lightly. I think that's too light. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so two eggs. You can add one, depends on you. You add too much eggs, it's gonna taste like eggs. And you don't want that. One that tastes like eggs is no good. All right, now that I crack the eggs, we wash our hands because, you know, you don't want egg on your hands. Oh, oh. Now, we get some condensed sweet milk. This is the best to get. I think so. Here, put it over Best to get right here. Then you just pour it all in here. It's stuck, it's pretty sticky, so make sure you scrape everything out. I had to learn how to make this stuff because I love them. When I was little, I would get $2 from my grandfather, and I would walk to the bakery in Puerto Rico, get me a Slurpee and some flan. They don't sell that here, so I had to figure out how to make it myself, and I would buy it from people, but didn't taste good or like it tasted in Puerto Rico. So I learned how to do it myself. Now, after the condensed milk, evaporated milk. The good kind of evaporated milk. See, open it. You just pour it on in there. Yummy. The whole Yummy. can, so you know, whole can of condensed milk and a whole can of evaporated milk. Two eggs are what makes it firm, so you need eggs. So you can add one egg or two eggs. Now, Melissa <laughs> was supposed to get our ingredients ready. What are you looking for? The vanilla extract, the new one. Oh, I did not. That's over there in the cabinet. The new one? Yeah, I forgot about that it's ingredient. The vanilla extract. Now, with this, I do not know amounts. I just pour what I believe is a good amount. Can you taste it to see if you like it? Or yeah, you can, you know. With the egg in it though? Yeah, drinking it, you're just, you know, putting your finger in or the spoon and getting a little taste of it. So, I'm gonna pour. Then we mix it. Make sure you get all the egg and the sugar mixed in here or the condensed milk. Perfect. Perfect. Let's try again, hold on. I think you're second guessing, guys. I don't think it's perfect. <laughs> Just a little bit more, you know, because it's so much of the condensed milk and the evaporated milk and the eggs. You know, you don't want to go too overboard because it'll be a really strong taste, but you know, Perfect. All right, now you're gonna let this sit because now you have to melt down some sugar because that's what's gonna go at the bottom of your dish. So you have to make the sugar, 
pour the sugar into your whatever this is. What is this? A baking dish. Baking dish, yeah. So it's gonna go on the bottom. You're gonna melt the sugar. Make sure this is completely dried off. Can't be wet. All right, so let's go. We're gonna melt some sugar. What about the oven? The oven. Do we preheat the oven? Good, but I never do, but. Okay. Just cause we're, we're you know, doing it now. We're, we'll preheat the oven. Bake to your left, and then 350. It's good at 350. Okay. Gonna leave it at 350, then pan. Sugar, doesn't matter. Sugar, doesn't matter. Any kind of sugar. Not any kind of sugar. It's got to be, you know, white sugar, but, you know. So you can't use sugar cane or any no. of them sugars? Just sugar? Just sugar. Okay. How much? One of those just pour, right? Yep, just pour it in there. It's got to be a good amount because it has to cover the whole bottom. My God, that's a lot of sugar. Right now, it should be on high to get it melting. And as it goes, you know, you lower it as you go as it's melting and then you you know you gotta continuously stir so it doesn't burn if it burns it's gonna not taste so good so you can't let it burn you have to keep stirring so we gotta wait a little bit you know until it warms up so yeah we'll be back once it melts it a little bit all right so guys it's starting to melt all right so as if you can see the bottom it's you can actually see it starting to, to melt now you want to turn your heat down a little bit because you don't want it to be that hot and burn the sugar. So you want to turn it down because now it's hot. So now it's going to be melting it and you just keep stirring. That's the key. You have to continue to stir it. You know, it'll take a little bit, but you know, it'll get there. Here you can see the sugar is starting to turn like a little yellowish brown. He's making cocaine. <laughs> Call the cops. It's cocaine in there. I'm just joking. <laughs> hey, hey, Chico, listen, listen. <laughs> you think you think this YouTube stuff pays well? Mm -mm. Then you cut this up really good and you send it to Miami. Why I gotta be Miami? What do you mean? Because that's where you know most of the that's coke is at. That's what's happening now. Yeah. You ain't never watched Scarface. All right, guys. If you see it, it's starting to melt down. He said he don't think that's a new sugar in there. But I honestly don't think this is enough sugar. You know, we'll see once it's completely melted, but I don't think it is, maybe. And I have, I have a big chunk stuck on a spoon, so it's gonna be difficult to get that off. I just tried off camera, burnt my finger. Hey dad, and I was like, man, I wish I was filming that, but I didn't get it. But if you see it, it's starting to melt down. Remember to keep stirring. I wonder if this is how you make sugar cane. Cause sugar cane is just sugar itself. I don't know, maybe. That have to be something we look up and try for the first time. Do something we've never cooked before. I'm looking down at the video and it kind of looks weird. Oven is ready. You want to get those big pieces out. You don't want to pour this into the baking pan with those big chunks in there. So you got to make sure everything is completely melted down. So just keep stirring until you see everything is melted down. Heat is burning my fingers now. Oh, come on, don't be a baby. Like my thumb is on fire. <laughs> see, look, come off the spoon. So that's where that piece came from because it just came off the spoon. So maybe use a, a different spoon, guys, so you don't burn your finger over Yeah, the maybe thing. something a little bit bigger, but make sure it's metal. So you gotta lift it up a little bit because it's so hot and it's, you see how it's starting to turn? brown you know you don't want it to be too brown because that means you burned it so just take it off the heat and just stir and the pan should be hot enough to melt whatever is left turn back real quick all right see completely melted boom just beautiful like that. right now turn the stove off we're gonna come over here now make sure it's completely dried off now you take it and you just pour it in there. You see that beautiful caramel color. Could you imagine getting this poured on you? you it would, would literally melt your skin off. Yeah, you don't you don't want that. So make sure when you do this, you're very careful because you definitely don't want this falling on you. So now make sure you take this, put it in the sink with some water. 
because you don't want it to harden up and then it's going to be a pain to get off. Oh, yeah. Now, you see it's beautiful. Now, you take the flung, stir it a little bit more, pour it all in. Perfectly splendid. As you see, it's done. Now, we need a baking tray. Where were you were going? And this one? Yeah. No, the deep one. That would be down there. All right. Now, we're gonna get need one of these. Need Is one it one of these? these? Is it one of these? I don't remember you using that. I don't that, think it's but... one of these. I think it was a metal. One of these, whichever, whatever you have that's like this. So you're gonna take this, put it in here with water in here. Got it. Got it? Right. Got it. Don't add too much because you don't want it to go inside of your flum. That would be gross. Yeah. Take it carefully. Carefully. And see, this is, you know, the thing, the baking. Ah! Oh, shit. Ah! This never happened before. <laughs> A little fail, what it's okay. We, do, what did we use? Then you have to have a different one because I don't remember ever doing that. I want to say you used the other one and put water at the bottom of it. Other what? That big pan. Because that's what you used last time to make it. Ah! Wow. We're just doing great, guys. Look at this. It's okay. Error and trial, you know? A little bit of vanilla never hurt nobody. All right, so Melissa's telling me that when I did it before, I used this. And probably she's right because I see the circle. I see the mark at the yeah, bottom. It, it, yeah. So. But you know, sometimes guys, when women are right, they just think they're always right. So we have to let them go and do it, you know? And as you can see what happened. <laughs> as you can see, I was very wrong and almost ruined it, but it's still good. It's still good. She's lost a little bit of flop, but it's still okay. Can you give me that, that rag too, please? Nah, I gotta. I go to clean the vanilla. Just throw this in here. We're gonna clean this. Let's put this back here so we don't have that happen again. Okay. Now we're gonna clean the mess. I like my flans to look nice. All right. See? Perfect. Beautiful. I'm not a professional. You know, I make mistakes. I messed up. Yeah. Stuff happens. All right. Now. That's what makes us human. You can see my shadow. <laughs> Alright guys, that's why it's always good to listen to your ladies. Now You heard it here guys. You heard it here. Listen to your ladies. Now, I'm gonna get some water and just, you know, pour it in. We'll say a little bit more. We're gonna attempt to carry this over without spilling it. Moment of truth, guys. Can he do it? More professional. Dun, 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 dun. You close it. And you wait about, I would say like an hour maybe, but make sure you check it and then you take a, a fork. Stick the fork in the middle and if the fork comes out clean, you're done. All right guys, now I'm gonna hand it over to Melissa and we're gonna make some corned beef and rice. All right, are you guys ready to make corned beef? Now corned beef is a Spanish dish. Not everybody likes it, um, it's a little bit different. So we're gonna go ahead and get started as I have hair falling out. So let's put that on the floor down there. <laughs> you don't like your food. <laughs> For the people that do know me, know me, I have health issues. So I am a kind of fast cooker. I don't tend to stand in the kitchen a lot because it hurts my back after a while. So again, I have a rice cooker that cooks rice for me. You know, it's easy. You don't have to use a rice cooker. You can use whatever rice, how you make it. 
Um, again, I use jasmine rice. I'm sure Spanish people do not use jasmine rice. They probably think I'm crazy because it's just like, you know. No, of, we use that Goya. Yeah, it's Goya, long rice, but I like jasmine. I like the smell of it. I like the texture of it, so we're going to use this. So again, I use the rice cooker. If I can get the lid off. Got rice. I'm going to do two cups. Um, I know, you know, people cook differently and some people wash their rice. I do not. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna wash it, so I'm just gonna pour it in there with two cups of water. That. And then I like to put salt and pepper and a little bit of a touch. So just, you know, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, a little bit of Italian seasoning, a spoon. Just, you know, mix that around. Put the lid on top. Plug that bad boy in. And cook. And you don't got to worry about it. It does it all by itself. You don't got to watch it. When it dings, your rice is done. That easy. Follow me Set it and forget it. Yep. So, I'm going to put this away. Put this out of our way. Now, the only reason I have this big bag of rice is because Jose thinks, like, big. Like, when he shops, he just thinks, like, you got to buy the... Biggest bag of rice, you know? Hey, what do you mean? That way you don't have to buy a rice for a while. So for this plate, again, my diced potatoes in a can. If you want to cut them up and cook them, you can. You're going to use one can of tomato sauce, and then you're going to buy the corned beef. Let me um, show you how to open it. You're going to buy one can of the Goya tomato sauce, people. Goya. You need one onion, and then you need some sauce. First... You're gonna cut the onion up, however you cut your onion up. Of course, take this off. You know you don't want to leave this on. Choke yourself. Just know that if Gordon Ramsay was in here, he would have called us both donuts. Probably. You know, I actually because I was watching Gordon Ramsay, I was like on this whole thing of watching him. I can cook a bomb steak because of Gordon Ramsay, you know. So I'll cut it in half. Now uh, you just, you know, uh, cut the onion. Just chop that baby up, guys. Then you need your pan. Obviously, that's hot, so let's not put it there. It goes in there. So the first thing is you have to cook the onion or it will not taste right. And you're not cooking the onion to taste um, like crunchy. You want it to be soft. So you just throw those in there. I'll bring this guys over here. Turn this on. So this is like a really easy dinner. So if you're running late, if you just are tired, this is something that cooks easily. Doesn't take a lot of time. And it tastes amazing, guys. Like this is this is one of Melissa's dishes that you know I enjoy the most. We're gonna get some butter because I like butter. I use. I can't believe it's not butter because it's non hydrogenated, it's plant based oils, and it's healthy for you. First step, you know, a little bit of butter in there. And you're just gonna let these, whoop, you're gonna let them cook. So you want them to be, be that crunch, you don't want no crunch in it. You you're gonna pretty much let them caramelize. You want them soft. So while that's doing that, you're gonna come back over here, you're gonna open up, you know, your potatoes, drain the water, because you don't want water in it. Do the same thing with the tomato sauce. I don't always use the whole can. I mean, it's completely up to people, but, you know. Now, this is pretty cool. I remember this when I was a kid, so it has, like, this little lucky little key here. Look at that. It's like, oh, I found a key. So you put it in here like this, and then you just twist and twist, and it opens now this kind of looks like dog food and cat food, so like don't weird yourself out when you look at it and be like, ew, am I eating dog food? Because it does look like it. But I promise you, it's not dog food. So you just go all the way around the can. Keep going until it doesn't, well, it's good. So open. See, it's almost like canned dog food, you know? But it's good, trust me. Just it kind of looks like, you know, what it looks like when you open Spam. Yeah, well, Spam. A little bit. That's more dog foodish. So I'm gonna add because I love garlic. Garlic's my friend. We're gonna add some garlic in here. You know, get a little bit of flavor. Leave that out. Can't be kissing Melissa later though. He 
loves it. Don't let him fool you. He's like, ooh, come here, you garlic bread. <laughs> <laughs> so again, you know, you don't want it too high because you want the onions to be soft. So let's cook it in. We're gonna dump this water out. We got potatoes, assholes. I cooked this the other night actually, and I didn't have tomato sauce, and it didn't come out as good as it should. You, you need a tomato sauce, so. So tell me down in the comments, guys, what you would like to see me and Jose cook. I still have the banana bread I gotta do, but unfortunately, the bananas got too rotten, so I had to away. So <laughs> got two bananas that are, you know, just waiting for them to get where they need to be to make banana bread. But if you guys wanna see us cook something, even if it's something we've never made before, um, you know, let me know down in the comments. You know, we'll try it out. Um, I can even try to get the kids involved, you know. They work, they're busy. That's why you don't really see the kids that often. You know, they all got jobs and they're all adults now. They're not babies anymore. They're all grown up. They're out there living their life. You're just gonna keep cooking them. I was also thinking about doing a video with my dad because he makes the best rice. It's called. Oh, am I supposed to say yes. something? It's called what? I don't know what you're talking about. Rice with gandules. A hoca gandules. A gandules. There you go. He makes amazing rice, so I was thinking about doing a video with him. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me and my dad in the kitchen cooking. Yeah, it's super good, guys. So now, just a little bit of backstory while we're cooking, why not? Let's talk, right? So I am born and raised in Florida. I'm a Florida girl. My dad's from Puerto Rico. My mom is from New York, upstate New York. She's Irish, Italian. German. I honestly don't think anybody, well I'm lying because Jose is 100% Puerto Rican. But most people are mixed, you know, they have all kind of different nationalities and stuff like that. But my mom, for being an Italian, she makes amazing Spanish food, like off the chain, you know? So no matter what nationality you are, like you can do anything in the kitchen if you like it, try it. Don't be afraid to try new things, you yeah. know? Yeah. You might be great at it. Yeah. We're still over here. Caramelizing the onions. If they're hard, yeah, it's it, it's gross. It just doesn't taste good. You don't want hard onions in this dish. Now, to be honest with you, this is the longest part of this dish. Once these are done, all you do is add other ingredients, add some seasoning, and the dish is done, which I'll show you. But this is the, the longest part of this dish. All right, so the onions are ready. You know, it took forever, but they're there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour potatoes in. And then I'm gonna pour a little bit of this in. Pour more in, pour more in. Okay, I'll pour more in. And then I'm gonna take a packet of sasong and I'm gonna sprinkle that all on top. Evenly, you know, get all in the edges. And you're gonna mix. And there you have it. That is corned beef, guys. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Not quite yet, guys. Not quite yet. So, um, this is how I do it. I mean, everybody does it different, but I'm going to scoop all this to one side over here. I'm going to take my corned beef. Or dog food. Or dog food. And we're going to just, you know, put it over here on this side. Because, you know. It's kind of weird looking when it comes out of the can. And then what I like to do is just kind of chop at it. You know, get it chopped up before I mix it. Because if not, then you try to chop it and you end up, you know, chopping your potatoes and they're already chopped and it's just weird. So I'll chop all of that like this, make it, you know. Like Woo! It must be Ethan. Make it look like kind of ground beef. Kind of like that, and then you know, I'm gonna leave it there for a second. I'm gonna put this back over here. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic, I'm gonna add another pack of sosong. You know, because I like sosong, even Max puts this on his mac and cheese. So, we're gonna pour this over here. Over so, here. this time you're covering the corned beef, yeah, like that, and then you know, just kind of mush it around again on this side. You can do it however you want, but I, I've done it before where, you know, I've mushed it in and I noticed that I tend to mush the potatoes with it. So now... You don't want mushed potatoes, guys. Mix it all together. Oh, that looks so good. And then when you take this and you put it on some white rice, oh my God. 
Now it's up to you guys. You can season it more. Sometimes it does need more sasson. Sometimes it needs more garlic. Sometimes it's more salt. But so then this is done. Which let's taste it because again, if you don't taste it, you know, like Gordon Ramsay says, you must always taste your food before you serve it. Right? So let's get a little bit below because it's hot. I'm gonna need another pack because it needs it. So this time, just kind of sprinkle it on top. You don't want to add too much because Sosone is um, a salty seasoning. Sometimes you can over put too much and then it's real salty and it doesn't taste very good. All right, so this is done. As you can see, this is what it looks like. And it's, I know it looks maybe weird to some, but it's amazing, trust me. Try it. If you do try it, please leave a comment down. Even if you're on my social media, leave a comment. Let me know you tried it. If you didn't like it, if you did like it, you know, everybody has different tastes. I am a big person. If you don't like it, don't eat it type of person. As you can see, the rice is done now. So the rice is done. Food is done. Yeah. Is and like she said, you know, she likes it. Malia likes it. I like it. The boys don't really like it. So, you know, you might not like it. You might. Now, just so you guys know, this dinner portion is done, but the flan is not done. So once we are ready with that, we will come right back. So we're going to do a 15 minute commercial break. All right, guys. So we have a little issue. Maybe. I don't think it's an issue. It just looks, you know, a little overcooked, but I think it's fine. But, you know, the food was so good that I lost track of time. So, but this is the final results from it being in the oven. Maybe don't wait so long to take it out, but it looks good. It looks good to me, right? So you got to be careful because this is really hot. If you're going to do it at home, I'd definitely maybe find like a better pan to do this because this yeah. is dangerous. And mind you, these are, you know, oven gloves, but you know, this is boiling hot water. It's like an accident. Let's put it up here. Calm down. Okay. Oh, okay. Look at him. He, he got it. He got it. Oh, you're going to put it on my hot counter. On your hot counter? I mean, you're going to put it up. That, um, uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, what? But it's hot and you're putting it on top of this. You can burn this. No, it's not. Okay. All right. So this is the final product, right? You see, but that color, that color you see is not like that it's burned or anything like that. It's just kind of the caramel came up around it. So that's what the color is. All right, so now you take this and you put it in your freezer. All right, guys. So now I'm gonna take it, put it in the freezer and you know, you give it about, I would say like an hour, maybe an hour and a half till it cools off a lot. He's like pretty get cold and firm up and then you take it and we'll go from there. All right guys, so the flan is done. It's cooled down enough where we can flip it and put it on a plate. But first, don't forget, you wanna do this, kinda, you know, just go around the edges, you know, cause of the melted sugar, it kinda hardens around. So you gotta scrape it so when you flip it, it just comes out of the bowl or the, you know, whatever this thing is. Baking dish. Baking dish, there you go. It's gonna look so pretty, guys. You just wait and see, it's like a magic reveal trick. All right, so there it is. Make sure it's scraped completely around and you bring it over here. Take the plate, make sure it's a big enough plate where you put it over and it completely covers the dish. So now. One, two. And flip it. All right guys, so if you see here where it's broken, we had you know a little mishap where it stopped recording and I already had flipped it. So I wanted you guys to see the actual process of me you know, scraping the sides so you don't go and try to flip it without scraping it and then mess it up because it's not gonna flip. So I put it back into the dish and it kind of ripped part of the bottom off. So that's why it's broken there. But if I would have flipped it and didn't have to do it over, it would have been perfect. It would have been, you know, you wouldn't have this. But anyway, cut it, you know, you cut it as, as big as you want. So that's a lot of butter. Look at this professional over here cutting. As I say that. <laughs> <laughs> See, she jinxed me. And then you take it and you serve it and it's gonna taste all right, guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed us cooking together. We enjoyed bringing you guys along. Make sure you check out my channel. Please go subscribe. I've got a few videos on there. 
especially the one of me and Melissa, the one I made for her. Please go check it out. It's a great video. I love it. And our Ghostbusters review. And I'll have one out soon about Spider-Man No Way Home. It's going to be December 16th. That movie's going to be amazing. So check out the spoiler-free review after the movie. It's going to be great, guys. And just so you know, it is down in the description. So if you check in my description, you will see his link. You just got to click on it. Go subscribe, turn the bell on. And until our next cooking video, we'll see you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes.